Hey, what's up guys? Mikey here. Last month, I was at a friend's house for a party, and I met this girl there. We became friends, but I did have too many of these, so I'm worried about the first impression I left on her. The pilot episode of a TV show is important. This is the first episode that will come out, so you don't just want to make sure that people will like it, but that it sets up a good first impression for the intended audience of the show. Of course, clips of the episode will come out during a commercial, but watching the entire episode on TV is the full package. That's why a lot of effort goes into the pilot of the show. Sure, just as much effort goes into any episode at all, but the very first episode kickstarts the show, which is vital to its ratings. Even though it's obvious how good Spongebob turned out since it's currently still on the air, I wanted to look back on the first episode ever created and decide how well it holds up today. But before that, I wanted to say, I still love every episode the same, even the bad episodes, so no matter how critical I may get on this episode or any of them, this won't change how I feel about them. Help Wanted is the episode where Spongebob gets his job at the Krusty Krab. What else would it be about? Since this episode is about Spongebob's job, which is one of the most important features of the cartoon, it's crucial that this episode introduces that well. And now, a little backstory. I already talked about the pitch of the series itself, but the original pilot was quite different. The original plot had to do with Spongebob and Squidward going on a road trip based on the film Pow Wow Highway from 1989. This was scrapped and reworked into episode 10, Pizza Delivery. The rest of the development went as I already mentioned. Hillenburg brings in a terrarium with models of the characters, set the pitch to Hawaiian music, network approved, etc. The pilot was directed in 1997 and premiered on May 1st, 1999 after the 1999 Kids' Choice Awards in the United States. That premiere gathered in so many views and kickstarted the series in style. And now it's finally time to re-watch the episode. Again. Just like with any standard time slot that Spongebob airs in, as soon as it starts we get the theme song with the pirate in the picture frame known as Painty the Pirate. The theme song is still just as iconic now as it was back in the day. Then we get the title card which have cool designs and colors and are always cool to look at leading into the opening credits which have a blue font and an undersea scenery. Next, there's a bubble transition, which is the most common transition from scene to scene in this show, leading to the French narrator talking about Bikini Bottom and how Spongebob lives in a pineapple under the sea. That sounds familiar. No, that's not right. Cut to Spongebob's bedroom, his foghorn alarm goes off, waking Spongebob up and we hear him speak for the first time. Today's the big day, Gary! If you look closely during the bedroom scene, you can see this scallop in a cage, which is always there for looks. It was never really touched on in the show. We then see Spongebob's gym and see the barbell with bunnies on the ends instead of weights. These have been shown again occasionally throughout the show, which is nice. After he lifts them once and drops them, he goes out screaming his most iconic line ever. I'm ready! We then see his best friend Patrick, followed by a running gag that was really only used throughout the rest of season 1 and then never again. After this, the show's common bubble transition appears and cuts to the Krusty Krab, the most commonly known restaurant in Bikini Bottom with a help wanted sign in the window. Spongebob acts like anybody going out for a job interview, and then we see Spongebob and Patrick talking with each other for the first time, and it shows their best friend relationship with each other, and Patrick reveals that they went to school together by saying Spongebob made a spatula out of toothpicks in Woodshaw. Patrick helps Spongebob regain his confidence, and he runs off to the Krusty Krab. Then we see Squidward, the octopus who lives in between Spongebob and Patrick who's always grumpy and works as a cashier at the Krusty Krab. Squidward doesn't like Spongebob or Patrick. When he realizes Spongebob is coming to apply for a job, Squidward doesn't want him to work at the Krusty Krab. He rushes in to try to warn Mr. Krabs, the greedy owner of the restaurant, but Spongebob comes in. After he trips, he wants to prove himself, saying Squidward will vouch for him. But Squidward doesn't want him to work there, so they send Spongebob away on a test. If he obtains a hydrodynamic spatula with port and starboard attachments and turbo drive and comes back with it, he'll get the job. As Spongebob leaves, Squidward and Mr. Krabs laugh and we see something that is caught by either keen observers or people who watch the show all the time. 
Four buses filled with anchovies appear, followed by five buses that circle the Krusty Krab. Then, we hear Mr. Krabs' most iconic line of season 1, as well as see something that startled those who saw this for the first time at the age of 4. A smelly smell, it smells... smelly... anchovies. The anchovies come off the buses and flood the Krusty Krab going, and cause havoc to Squidward and Mr. Krabs. Meanwhile, SpongeBob goes to the main grocery store at Bikini Bottom, Bargain Mart, to look for the spatula while things get worse for Squidward and Mr. Krabs. They both climb the pole thinking that it's the end. It can't be the end, it's the very first episode. Much to both of their surprise, SpongeBob returns with the spatula, revealing there was only one in stock. SpongeBob goes to the kitchen, leading to a montage of him making Krabby Patties with no prior training and no knowledge of the secret Krabby Patty formula, to everybody's favorite Tiny Tim song, Living in the Sunlight. After the anchovies are fed, Mr. Krabs hires Spongebob because of his impressive work and the amount of booty, much to Squidward's dismay. Patrick comes in, asking for a Krabby Patty. Spongebob goes into the kitchen, fires multiple patties at Patrick, which flings him out of the Krusty Krab, and Squidward calls for Mr. Krabs, and the episode ends. As previously mentioned, the pilot of a series is meant as the introduction to the show, meaning it has to set up the standards for the show, and in my opinion, this episode was a great introduction to the series. It gives off good first impressions of only five of the seven main characters and their general personality traits. Spongebob's optimism, Patrick's unintelligence but well-meaning, Squidward's grouchiness, Mr. Krabs' greediness, and Gary... in general. The general settings of Bikini Bottom, Spongebob's house, and the Krusty Krab are well established, and the biggest aspect of the show, Spongebob's job, is set up perfectly. It's shorter than the standard 11 minute episode, but Steven Hillenberg said that he never really wanted to try and write a half hour show. He wrote the shows to where it felt right, which definitely works well for this episode. Being 8 minutes long is better than stretching it out with 3 minutes of what would probably just be filler to reach the 11 minute mark. It doesn't introduce us to the other two main characters, Sandy and Plankton, but it also doesn't feel like it was necessary to shoehorn them into the episode either. They will be instituted a few episodes later, and are still a very important part of the series. There are also some important settings such as Jellyfish Fields, Sandy's Tree Dome, and Mrs. Puff's Boating School that will be introduced later as well, so not everything has to be introduced here, just the most important things, the characters and locations that would be seen at least every other episode, and they were all introduced very nicely, which is just one reason why I feel this works so nicely as the very first episode of this incredible cartoon. Help Wanted was a great episode, and it kicked off Spongebob in an amazing, and more importantly, funny way. It's safe to say this episode succeeded in giving a good first impression of the show because of how much of a success the show is. I've also made good first impressions too, but I worry about the one that I made with that girl. Darn it, she's moving out of town and she has a boyfriend. Well, I don't have to worry anymore, but now that first impression I made doesn't matter now.